Hello, I'm Alastair MacLeod, the Acting Secretary to the Theological Forum of the Church of Scotland. I've been asked to give you some information regarding a proposal for change that is currently being debated by the Presbyteries of the Church of Scotland. This proposal concerns the confession of faith of the Church. That is, how the Church states what it believes about God and salvation and the Christian life. Currently, the Kirk gives a special place to one historical statement of Christian faith, the Westminster Confession of Faith. The proposal before us is that instead we will have a book of confessions going forward containing five statements of faith. So first, the background. The Westminster Confession is a document which was written in the 1640s by an assembly of ministers and elders both English and Scottish, um, that gathered at Westminster during the Civil War. In 33 chapters, it sets out in careful, precise language the conclusions of the Assembly across the whole field of Christian doctrine. It was approved by the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland in 1648 and has been recognised as the doctrinal standard of the Church of Scotland since 1690 subordinate only to the Bible itself. For this reason, from 1690, ministers and elders were expected to swear their belief in the whole confession prior to being ordained to office. So what changed? Well, the ordination vow to the whole confession became very problematic in the late 19th century. The Westminster Confession is extremely specific in its language and theology, and its conclusions did not accommodate the breadth of opinion on Christian theology which the Church of Scotland contained. The ministers and elders of the Kirk desired to be part of a broad and national church that accommodated a variety of views and perspectives, and were not prepared to treat every disagreement with the Confession as heresy. So what was their answer? Because of this situation, the Church agreed to change the terms of the vows and subscription that office holders made in relation to the Confession, and this was done by an Act of General Assembly in 1910. No longer would ministers and elders swear to the entire Confession in all its details, rather the new vow stated the candidate's belief in the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith contained in the Confession. The new vow did not define what doctrines were fundamental, however, leaving that to the courts of the Church to determine in the event of a charge of heresy being raised. The new vow was retained in the Union of 1929 that produced the modern Church of Scotland and continues in use right down to the present day. Why then is the Theological Forum proposing a change to this situation? Well, first, there is an issue of honesty. The Westminster Confession continues to be described in the key constitutional documents of the Kirk as our principal subordinate standard. Anyone coming new to the Kirk could reasonably think that they could read the Westminster Confession to discover what the Church of Scotland believes and teaches. Yet there are many points on which the Confession does not reflect where the Church is today. First, it condemns the Roman Catholic Church in very severe terms and calls the Pope the Antichrist, language which the General Assembly specifically disowned in 1986. It speaks in literal terms of a creation in six days, language from Genesis, which most in the Church of Scotland would now interpret metaphorically. It teaches a doctrine of double predestination, that God predetermines some individuals for heaven and others for hell, which only a minority in the Kirk would maintain today. And fourth, it does not mention love as an attribute of God or social justice as part of the calling of the Church. For these reasons, the Forum considers that the Church needs to change its constitution to better reflect the current spectrum of views within the Church of Scotland. 
Second, however, there is an issue of accountability or lack thereof. The current vow to the fundamental doctrines contained in the Confession opens the door very wide indeed in doctrinal terms. In practice, no minister or elder has ever been found to have breached the terms of this vow. It is open to interpretation what the commitment of this vow actually involves. The Forum believes that a more specific doctrinal commitment should be required from those who serve in ministry or eldership. So what's the proposal? The Forum is proposing a couple of significant changes. First, instead of having the Westminster Confession alone as the doctrinal standard of the Kirk after Scripture, the Forum proposes that there should be a book of confessions. This book will contain five confessions. These are 1. The Apostles' Creed, a very ancient doctrinal statement of the early Church, which is often repeated in worship in the Church of Scotland. 2. The Nicene Creed of 325, another very ancient statement of basic definition regarding the Trinity, the belief of the Church in one God in three persons. 3. The Scots Confession of 1560, the first confession of the Kirk after the Reformation, chiefly written by John Knox, which it used until the acceptance of the Westminster Confession in the following century. 4. The Westminster Confession of 1647. And 5. The 1992 Statement of Faith a modern, concise summary of Christian doctrine which was approved by the General Assembly of 1992 and which does specifically affirm that God is love. The Forum believes that these five documents reflect more fully the history of the Church of Scotland than the Westminster Confession alone. Importantly, the five documents do not contradict each other. They are all careful and orthodox statements of faith. However, their inclusion underlines the fact that many in the modern Church of Scotland would not subscribe to every detail of the Westminster Confession without reservation and are content to express their faith in shorter and less specific terms. What else will change? The Forum proposes new doctrinal vows to be sworn by ministers and elders in the future to reflect this change. These vows will not refer to the Westminster Confession specifically, but to the two oldest creeds in the Book of Confessions, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, and then to the Book of Confessions as a whole. The new vows proposed are as follows. Do you believe the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith expressed in the Apostles and Nicene creeds? Do you confess the Catholic and Reformed faith of the Church as contained in its Book of Confessions and promise to be guided by the said book in your life and doctrine? Should the proposed changes be agreed by the Church, future candidates for ministry and eldership will have to subscribe these vows to be accepted for ordination. So what's the situation now? Well, the Forum's proposals have now been approved by the 2023 General Assembly, but this is only the first step in the approval process. These proposals will now be debated by all the presbyteries of the Church, each of which will vote on the subject. It will be necessary for a two-thirds majority of these presbyteries to support the proposal in two successive years, so both this year and next year, and the next two General Assemblies as well for the change to go ahead. If it receives the necessary approval, the change will therefore take effect from the General Assembly of May 2025. The Theological Forum will keep the wider Church informed as this proposal continues to be debated. But if you have any questions about the proposals, feel free to get in touch with the Forum directly. Thanks for listening.